One of the moves I loved right out of draft night was the Steelers drafting Devin Bush and, you know, trading up to draft him. I've kind of joked about how typically the Steelers don't trade up to the top 10 to get a top 10 level talent. They usually just happen to select a guy who is taken pick 25 or later who just happens to be a top 10 talent. That tends to be the way it works for the Steelers. You know, if the way they draft, I mean, there's a couple of teams you could maybe put ahead of them. I think the Patriots, you know, obviously the Seahawks are definitely in the conversation, but they're definitely an elite level drafting team. And so if they trade up to get somebody, you have to have a good feeling that that guy is pretty good. And I think Devin Bush is pretty good. It seems he could fill that Ryan Shazier sized hole that they've had for several years now, really since his injury. They really needed a good linebacker, and I think Bush can be that good, fast linebacker that they could really use. So we got to see his first look in a Steelers uniform against Tampa Bay in week one of the preseason. And so let's talk about that game and break down what happened. And we'll start things off with this play. What Tampa Bay is going to do is have their left guard and center double team that Steeler who's right over there, and it'll also have just one on one matchups on the rest of the bottom half of the screen. From there, they'll actually pull their tight end, Cameron Brait, over to the bottom half of the screen to block that Steeler who's in the area, so this now means that the closest Steeler who could make a play is going to be Devin Bush. But Tampa Bay has a plan for that as well. What they're going to do is hand the ball off to Peyton Barber as if he's going through the top half of the screen, but then have him break down through the bottom half of the screen to try to get around Bush a little bit. That's the way this play is supposed to work. And one thing you'll see once this ball is snapped is both Bush and Cameron Sutton are both going to be in very good position right here. For Sutton, you know, he's a defensive back, but he's breaking in enough that Bray will have to block him, therefore Bush can move over and potentially make a tackle if it is a run to the right side of the screen. And for Bush, he's doing a pretty good job of staying in the middle of the field on this one. So while Barber pretends as though he's going to be going up to the top half of the screen, Bush isn't really fooled and he stays right in the middle and is still ready to make a tackle in any direction Barber ends up running to. So when Barber breaks down to the bottom half of the screen, Bush can easily run over and make this tackle. When when it comes to being a linebacker, there's three main things I care about. Positioning, positioning, and positioning. I mean, that's just really the key way to be an effective linebacker in the NFL, It's just being in position. That's what makes being a linebacker so difficult, is the fact that you have to always be in position on every play. And the minuscule defenses in a linebacker can actually mean so much compared to other positions. I mean, if you're one foot just away from where you would want to be, that can be the difference in, you know, a five-yard gain and a 50-yard gain. It can be the difference between a first down or an interception. It means so much. Little things mean so much for a linebacker position, which is why they are so important even in today's NFL when it's less run heavy than it has been in the past. I would actually argue linebackers are becoming more and more important just with the way the game is going and play action is becoming more important. There is also this next play where what's going to happen is Tampa Bay's left guard is going to move up to block Devin Bush. And you know, this is still the first team on the field. So that's Ali Marpet, who's a very good left guard. And you know, according to Madden, he's actually the best left guard in the game. I'm not sure if I personally would go that far but he's at the very least still a very good left guard. And so one thing you'll see once this ball is snapped is that Bush is definitely moving over to the bottom half of the screen and trying to get into the way of this play. It is a run to the bottom half of the screen, so you know he's getting a decent position here. For Marpet, he probably would have liked it if Bush moved a little bit further in and not as far to the bottom half of the screen, because then he could kind of push him up to the top half of the screen and really take him out of the play. At this point, he can't really do that. So again, good positioning by Bush. So now for Marpet, he kind of has no choice but to try to push Bush towards the bottom half of the screen and kind of use Bush's momentum to his disadvantage in a sense. And so that's what he's going to do. He does a pretty good job. I mean, he does get Bush somewhat out of the way. But one thing you got to love about Bush is look at how far bent over he is. He's kind of realizing, okay, I'm not necessarily in a perfect situation here, but I still am in an okay situation. I mean, the guy with the ball is literally two feet away from me. The problem, of course, is that he has a guard pushing on his back and is in pretty good position to just push him out of the way. What Bush is going to be able to do is kind of just lunge at him and sort of get his arm in the way and still find a way to make that tackle. Good play from Bush, really. First, he got the positioning right, and then when Marpet did push him out of the way, he wasn't able to push him totally out of the way, and Bush was still able to lunge over and help get into the play. I mean, I think that's a really good play from Bush. I mean, anyone can dominate a bad offensive lineman. To me, what I like more is when someone can beat a good offensive lineman. You're not going to be able to beat a good offensive lineman as dominantly as you would beat a bad offensive lineman, obviously, but there aren't many bad starting offensive linemen in the NFL. Once you start playing NFL games, you will have to go up against good talent, and he can beat good talent. There is also this play where this will kind of show off his speed a little bit. It's going to be a cover three zone, but with an extra man jogging back into coverage. And for Tampa Bay, they're actually just running a screen pass on this one. And so that's where Bush is on the field, so he's in charge of covering the middle of the field. And so watch what happens once the ball is snapped and this play develops. Winston's going to hit his halfback who's right there as of right now, and that's where Bush is on this play. He's clearly kind of far away, you know? I mean, he's going to have a lot of room to run, and there is an offensive lineman who can block him. This time it's center Ryan Jensen. So, you know, it's not a great situation, however, it's actually going to turn into a very good situation, largely because of look at what Jensen is going to do, and more importantly, look at what he's not going to do. He wasn't sure if his halfback had had the ball yet, and he was afraid of getting a penalty, so he's actually gotten out of the way of Bush on this play, but now Bush has a straight shot to the halfback. 
it's something that he definitely didn't see coming. I think he was probably just going to try to take Jensen out of the play and then just let somebody else help make a tackle. However, now all of a sudden he has a straight shot to the halfback, but it's not a great situation. I mean, he's running full speed. He's going to have to kind of dive to try to make this tackle, but that's going to be exactly what he does, and he is able to pull it off. Granted, I don't know if that's a tackle if there weren't other Steelers in the area, but hey, there were other Steelers in the area, and he helped bring him down, so give him credit. I think it's plays like that that you will see Bush becoming a bigger and bigger factor in with Pittsburgh. It's being able to make those types of plays, being able to run sideline to sideline. And I think a lot of people will say, well, wait a second, that wasn't really a great play by Bush. I mean, he kind of got lucky in the fact that he was able to run straight to the halfback. And yeah, there was an element of luck, and that's because in football, there is an element of luck. What makes the best teams the best teams isn't the fact that they get lucky, it's the fact that they take advantage of when they have lucky breaks. And that's what Bush did on the last play, and it's what he's going to do on this next play as well. It's going to be a run for Tampa Bay, so it'll have that receiver block the defensive back on the top half of the screen, and they're also going to have their right tackle and right guard both block those two Steelers who are on the edge on the top half of the screen over there. But then what they're going to do is pull their center and left guard over to the top half of the screen, since this is going to be a run in that direction. So therefore, the other two closest Steelers who are in the area should get blocked by those two Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are moving over to block him. That's the way this play is supposed to work. And so for Bush, that's where he is on the screen, and watch what's going to happen. More importantly, watch how they're going to get a lucky break right when this ball is snapped. The guy you see who is circled is Evan Smith, who just fell down over his own feet, which is typically not great. Smith is probably best known for getting stomped on by Sue, and he actually just recently got cut this week, so, you know, really a rough week for Smith, falling down on this play and also getting cut. But, you know, the advantage is now there's two Steelers who are going to be trying to make a tackle, but now there's only one offensive lineman who's blocking them, meaning that somebody, and by somebody I mean Bush, will now be completely unblocked. So again, take advantage of those mistakes and watch how he's going to quickly get to that halfback and create a loss of yards. The best way that worked for Pittsburgh is just Tampa Bay had a center who fell down. But how often have we seen plays go poorly? Almost every play, an offensive player does something wrong. There's 11 guys out there. It's hard for them all to execute perfectly every play. I mean, that's just football. So it is the kind of thing that can't happen. But you gotta give Pittsburgh, and more specifically, you gotta give Bush credit for taking advantage of that mistake. That's what football is. But there's also one other thing you should do on the field. Not necessarily taking advantage of mistakes, but there's also, you know, there's some players who just do their job. That is kind of the Bill Belichick mantra of just do your job. And of course, everyone always looks up to what Bill Belichick says, and for a good reason, the guy has eight Super Bowl rings. But, you know, it's one thing to do your job, and it's another thing to do your job and then some. And that's what Bush is going to do on this play, where the way it's going to work is that Tampa Bay is going to have their left tackle and also tight end double team that Steeler who's right over there. And then their tackle will move up the block bush right over there. And what you'll see once this ball is snapped is that actually once again a Tampa Bay lineman is going to kind of fall down here. This one a much more forgivable situation as he's kind of on a knee at this point. So again, kind of a good situation for Bush except for one thing. It's the fact that the back is going to actually run up to the top half of the screen. So Bush won't get blocked too much, but he is going to have to move up to the top half of the screen basically at the same pace that a halfback can. But that's going to be exactly what he does. He's able to run over, get in position, and make the tackle. Another really good play from Bush. I mean, that speed and that acceleration is what I really like from Bush. I mean, let's be honest for a second. If you're going to play in the same division as Baltimore, you're going to have to have some linebackers who can move sideline to sideline pretty well. And luckily with Bush, I think Pittsburgh has that. Also, should we mention, this guy is a rookie. I know he had a good preseason game, but it is just one preseason game. So let's not, you know, buy into the hype too, too much. But it definitely looks to be that it could be a good sign next year. And it could end up being a very good sign if he can turn into the player that we all hope he will be. Anyways, maybe his best play of the night was this one, where it came on a 4th down and inches situation. What Tampa Bay is going to do is have their left guard and left tackle both double team that Steeler who's right there, and also have their center just have a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the other Steelers interior lineman right in that area. So for Bush, he's actually not even going to get blocked on this one, but there's a reason for it. The idea behind it is that since it is a 4th down and inches situation, Bush will kind of have to hang on a second to see exactly what the play is, and by the time that the running back is already in motion, and the time he realizes, oh, it's going to be a run through this hole, it'll be too late. The second the back has the ball, I mean, there are two Steelers in the area, one of which who is Devin Bush, who kind of Choi Paul Malo S kind of just ran through that gap right there. It was just great awareness and he's able to quickly make a tackle and they're not able to get the first down in that one. I mean, that's a great play from Bush. That's what you love to see if you're a Steelers fan. Not just being a physical athlete, because we all know this guy can play, but the fact that he's a smart player as well means a lot, especially in that middle linebacker position. One last play to talk about, this is a third down and 12, and for Tampa Bay, they're actually just going to kind of give up on this play. They want to make for an easier punt, so they're just going to run a draw play and sort of just say, okay, who cares, it's preseason, let's punt the ball. And so for Bush, what's going to happen is that the left guard is going to move up to block him. That's the way it's going to work for Tampa. But one thing I like about this is watch what happens once this ball is snapped. Watch how much space Bush is kind of giving the guard. He is not attacking him, which is actually a pretty smart thing to do. If this was a third down and four, I wouldn't recommend this. But this is third down and 12. He knows the situation. He wants to just make a tackle and not allow 
a 13 yard run. That's all he cares about. So if he ran over and kind of attacked the guard, the guard might be able to push him out of play and then he's completely out of play, which is a bad situation. I mean, the halfback's right there. So as long as he just keeps some space, he can easily move off the guard at any moment and then make a tackle. So once the halfback moves up to the top half of the screen, watch how he's able to easily get off that block and run over and get into the play. That's good situational awareness. You know, again, on a third down and four, I wouldn't really recommend that because you're not doing a great job of getting into the play and stopping the first down happening. But on third down and 12, you know what? You'll give up five yards because who cares? It's really not the end of the world. You most just want to make sure you don't allow a conversion. That's what Bush did on that play. Get the ball back in good field position. Don't worry about two or three extra yards. Just get the ball back. And that's what he did, and I give him credit for it. I mean, Bush is a good player. I've already made an entire video about him. He's clearly got talent. There's no denying that. And again, there's a couple of teams I just assume they know what they're doing because they just always seem to draft so well. The Steelers are one of those teams. So I like the pick. I thought he had a very good first preseason performance for what that's worth. I know it doesn't mean everything, but it does mean something in my opinion. And I am interested to see how well he'll play once the regular season starts.